in Montreal uh, what gets you to like take a come back in with this new rebranding and how do you link up with Freeway Rick Ross well well, basically this is how it happened I, I was doing my own music um, uh, in terms of doing a, working on an album and recording a lot, a lot of songs and then like you said there was the venue of Twitter and at that time I just started to just try out some stuff. I wasn't choosing the proper features back then at that time, but I was choosing the features I liked. So I reached out to have a mob beef and terminology and sky zoo and planet Asia, buck wild. You know, I was reaching out to people on Twitter and most of the people back then, I don't know. It was, it was, they were answering back and some of them was the artist directly. Some of them was the manager. But that's where I got all my features, like in terms of like connecting with with all these American rappers at first. It was all through Twitter. And, uh, you know, just, okay, holla, okay, this is the verse, okay, it's $500, whatever, boom, here's the beat, they would send me back the verse, you know, and uh, that we would collaborate. So... So that, that's how I first got a certain respect from other people, because then I was starting to show I had some solid features, so... I had this guy called Spark, and then uh, he was with Big Apple, who used to manage The Weeknd and uh, and Drake back then uh, at the beginning with the shirt, I'm not a rapper. Um, they offered me this deal, and they were like, okay, well, we can manage you, and it was about, and it was a crazy amount per month they were charging me, like almost two Gs a month. But they were like, one was in LA and one was here, and uh, since they were already manager for the belly, weekend, Drake, you know, people like that, I was like, okay, it's going to cost me, but I'll be in good hands. You know what I mean? So, uh, maybe that's my next step. And they were helping me choose the best songs I did from all the, you know, the multiple selections, the multiple ones I had recorded. And it kind of started like that. I started, I, and then I went to the bank and I took a loan because back then you, you heard stories like Drake and take a loan to invest in the shit and you're like okay so i took 30 g's at the bank and i was like okay let me uh, do what i need to do for my career so i paid my features you know i was paying this management two g's a month but i was expecting quick results because i was like okay now i'm in good hands it's gonna be quick but it was still taking certain time for for certain aspects but then that's when you know i paid myself a video in, in los angeles by black diamond and you know, uh, went in Los Angeles and they had planned all these studios I had to go to and meet the people and meet Rick Ross because they were doing a newspaper back then called Swag News. And it was a paper that it was everywhere. They printed, it was like a hip hop newspaper. And they had French Montana and all the big rappers. And uh, Rick Ross came out of prison like 10 months ago and they had hooked, hooked up with him some type of way. And they, they planned to come and do his interview uh, a day before uh, my video shoot. And it was where the video shoot was supposed to be at, which was a sushi shop on Hollywood Boulevard. And um, it was in the basement. They had this whole big studio built in the basement. So basically, that's where I kind of met Rick Ross because he came there and did his interview. And then we just spoke and, you know, we, we connected. We did a little interview just, you know, for the cameras and everything. And then uh, uh, that's how we connected. And I made him listen to the song and the song was called, It All Depends On You. And because he came out of prison 22 years instead of 25 because of his, the way he was acting in prison was good. He kind of felt related to the message, I think. So it, cause then he felt, okay, yeah, it all depended on me to get out of prison too. And he really, he was like, he was really feeling the track. And uh, so I told him at the end, you know, he left and uh, we were like, everybody was saying bye and whatever. We went to all eat together. And I was like, yo, the, the video shoots tomorrow. So if you want to come, you know, have a, an appearance, you know, whatever, we'll, uh, we'll put you in the video. And he was trying to back then be known in Canada too, because he was trying to claim his name. He was in court with Warner Brothers, with the, real, with the rapper Rick Ross to try to get his name back because... When he came out of prison, he had no money left from the millions he made selling coke. He was just 
He just had his name, but that's what he was fighting for, you know? So, to my surprise, the next day when the video shoot went down, he came true. And he showed some love and he just, you know, appeared in the video and we did some some interviews. That's why I was able to, like, sample, put some samples of him saying, hello, je suis le vrai Rick Ross. And then I, in French, because I was like, say it in French for the Quebec people in the beginning of the song. <clears throat> Uh, uh, yeah, he just he just did the cameo in the video, and nobody understood how this French white kid from Quebec City was was with this Scarface from Los Angeles. But it just happened that we crossed paths and we kept in touch, exchanged numbers, and we were just calling each other sometimes because I had this other website I was doing called I Need Hip Hop, which was a blog, and I had him do an exclusive Hold interviews on. on that. You have a and blog I, too. Yeah, I had a blog back then called I Need Hip Hop. And uh, and then my manager uh, hooked up with some other guys from Quebec City that love my music. So I made a deal with them because they wanted to push their, their clothing brand. And they were going on this Quebec tour to push their clothing brand everywhere. So I said, well, on top of your clothing brand, let me give you my four, four or five mixtapes. Let me give you my frame hats, my frame shirts and all this shit so you could go around and also sell those things and, and just play the music and people be like, what's that? Oh, these are the mix CDs. And so I had made a deal with them to sell all my shit and, um, and go on tour and do some, some of the dates with them, you know? So then that's when we kind of decided to, they had bought a Winnebago and we, we found a sponsor and sponsors to, to, to wrap it all up with my face and everything. So they kind of, they put their logo, my logo, and then I put a big picture in the back of me and Freeway Rick Ross. And then, like, uh, that was my tour bus, and I had a tour bus. I don't, I don't remember how it all happened, but that's what it is. And we pushed it. We all paid. And we had an old Winnebago, but wrapped up like a new tour bus, and it looked amazing outside, but it was an old Winnebago. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like yeah. I, I didn't want to go to stops and, and, and have and have people look too much because you know the tires are screeching and everything. But the, from outside, it looked amazing, you know. And everybody was like, "How the fuck, Frank got a tour bus?" And then uh, Rick Ross saw that his face was on it, so I was kind of the spokesperson for, uh, "Oh, he's the real Rick Ross," basically, because there was whole this whole controversy back then. You know, when he was coming back. Yo, I know exactly what you're talking about because I was a Rick Ross hater back then because. I'm not going to lie, I love Rick Ross music now. But back then, I'm a lyrical miracle. Fuck anything that sounds like whatever, I don't understand, white boy. So, um, I was like secretly low-key hoping that Freeway Rick Ross would win and Rick Ross would have to change his name because he was a correctional officer. And for some reason... Exactly. So that's why you saw earlier you were playing my mixtape I did with him and we gathered all the people from Canada with the DJ crowd from, from Montreal. And he was just supporting everything I was doing because he saw I put his fucking face on my tour bus. So imagine how a bless how much of a blessing you see somebody's coming. He met me once in LA, he took a couple some pictures and, and then he's like, I'm putting him on the tour bus. So he's like at that time, he was pushing he was pushing a freeway freeway music group FMG, and he had some rappers on his label. So every time I was doing new songs, instead of paying for features, now I was just calling Rick Ross and saying, "Okay, I got this new song I'm going to release, and we're on tour. We're this that. So who you want to put on the song?" So he would say, "Okay, I got Paris Montgomery, I got T Carter, I got no no no." So he just so then they would just send me verses and I started collaborating with so much people from the west coast like that you know and then that's how i got connected with mac lucci because i almost did a feat with snoop dogg that was supposed to be paid by a skateboard brand with uh jay casanova that had uh, his own skateboard brand and stuff called selfish and it was all planned that i was going to shoot the video with snoop and dennis beach on, on the skateboard part but uh, finally they choked. But at the end of the day with Freeway, I, I kind of, I discovered Mac Lucci and I said, yo, I saw he was in his video. I said, can you put Mac Lucci on my next song? So then he just, I was able to get Mac Lucci's number and he just hollered at him and connected for the feature, you know? 
So there was very, it was a lot of a blessing because the guy was, even though he is what he is and he did what he did, he was just very humble and very, uh, you would talk to him like he's just one of your friends, one of your buddy, how's your daughter, how's this, that, you know, da, da, da. And he, he would stay humble, you know. Then I made jokes sometimes like, hey, you get too big again and I won't able to reach you. He's like, no, nah, I'm always going to ask you. <laughs> and now he got too big and switched numbers and he's unreachable. But if they see him, if they see him, they'll see him and he's going to be like, yeah, fry him, you know, but, but it was a cool time. And then it's just different in Hollywood. You know, I, I got to go to some places and they were playing my mixtapes and I got everybody when they, when they understand the, the language compared to here, they don't fully understand sometimes, you know, even in Montreal, half of them won't understand but when everybody's rocking with your music and you're in one of the like most popping clubs and the owner accepts to play your music and everybody's just vibing while they're eating lobster pizza and, and, and drinking like Patron and shit. You're just like, you know, I think I'm made to do this, you know, like everybody's vibing to my music and everybody loves it, you know, and everywhere I, I went to these studios, okay, they respected the music, they respected this. So nobody ever hated on my music that much. You know, I never really had a lot of hate towards my, I never felt anybody was like, oh, I'm never heard feedback like that, you know, through my career. So, and it was always getting better and better. So it, it was kind of easy for me to elevate, but it was just the steps were getting bigger. You know, I almost featured with Snoop, it didn't happen, fuck. I wonder what was the next big move. I had an investor, almost had another feat with Nas. That didn't work when we spoke to the manager, it didn't turn out. Then we were, we were just trying to find investors because then the music is good, the videos are, are good. Everything is good, but you just, then you, you need a $50,000 to get played on all the US radios. And that's what it costs for one, one song in US if you wanted to play on all the radios, it's about $50,000. So then you need investors, you need money somewhere, you know, that's why. A lot of people will start in the game and, and, and get to a certain point, like even hit people here in Montreal, they'll get to a million views, but they'll never get to 50 million, 30, 30 million, 90 million views because they're not, when they get to that last step, when they, they just already feel on top and they're not even near the top. They're just getting starting to get, get their bug in it. And nobody takes advantage of their organic reach to have a million and start advertising and doing more shit for them and doing bigger feats and doing bigger that. They just stick another, start doing pe features with people here and nobody cares that you'll keep having a million, two million, you know? So that's why at least throughout my, my music career, I could say I was the only, one of the only rappers in Quebec to have at my tour bus. I've met one of the biggest respected drug dealers. I have the best street cred you know, that no, anybody has, you know, I had some, some features with some of the realest people in the hip hop game in terms of not the mainstream, but, you know, that are still respected today. And it's just like, I did my thing, you know, and it's just, I had, I, I was pushing, 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 and I had some going, but it was just that last step was really big. So that's why I, I kind of, I kind of <laughs> ran out of money at some point. It was like, fuck, man, I'm just spending money. I'm not getting any money back, you know? Mm -hmm.